Coming up on today's message with Pastor Johnny. Can you imagine living in a country where they make it illegal to report on, to talk about, to teach on specific historical events? Can you imagine a government trying to limit teaching on history? Amen. Let's get into the word. Uh, Today's message is going to come from the book of Nehemiah, the eighth chapter. I'm going to hop around a little bit. I'm going to read verses one through three, then verses five and six, then verses eight through ten. Again, that is the eighth chapter of Nehemiah, verses one through three, five and six, then eight through ten. Ten. I am reading uh, the New International Translation. Let's, uh, let's see what the word has to say for us today. Amen. Hear ye the word of the Lord. All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. All the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Verse 5, Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, amen. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Verse 8. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra, the priest and teacher of the law, And the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as if they'd listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drink and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This this day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me, church. O Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We thank you for this opportunity to gather once again in your word. Lord God, let The words of my mouth and the meditation of everyone's heart be acceptable in this sight, Lord God. Hide me behind your cross so that people don't see me, but they see Jesus. Let this be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, For the time that we get to spend together today, I would like to talk a little bit about uncensored libraries uncensored libraries. Um, My daughter, Elle, and I uh, spend time together playing a video game called Minecraft. Uh, For those who are not familiar with the video game Minecraft, it's a game simply put about blocks. Uh, The players can 
tear down and build up blocks. It's Minecraft is a, a video game where players explore a virtual world, extract raw materials, make tools, build structures. They can also fight computer controlled enemies called mobs or compete against other players. And when you log into Minecraft, you can choose to play on survival mode, which you have to gain resources and build the world and maintain health, or you can play in a creative mode where you have unlimited resources. I enjoy playing Minecraft uh, because while it is fun to play with virtual blocks, as I played with real blocks like Legos when I was younger, I also have been able to pick up that this game is secretly teaching people things while they play it. Um, there are things in the game that help the players learn about computer coding. Uh, there are things that help them learn about electrical circuits uh, and other forms of technology while they are playing the game. And people have used this virtual world for real world solutions. There is a nonprofit called uh, Reporters Without Borders and they have created a backdoor into the game, a, a server uh, that when you go through the portal into this back door, you can visit a virtual library with articles, uncensored articles, and this journalism can be accessed by any player, anytime, anywhere in the world. And in this porter, portal, rather, you can gain access to writings from reporters who may have died reporting the news that they were trying to get out because reporting that news was forbidden in their home country. Through this Minecraft portal, Reporters Without Borders is, is trying to expose the younger generation to the importance of press freedom. Uh, in the real world, uh, Anna Nelson, a U.S. Uh, executive director of the group, says there are very real consequences when information is censored. Uh, they want the game users, some as young as seven years old, to understand how important it is to have access to the truth. And uh, since that the, the, the virtual library has launched uh, in March of 2020, according to an article in Fast Company, the project has reached more than 20 million people from 165 countries. When you want to control people, you start by controlling their access to sources of information. Can you imagine living in a country where they make it illegal to report on, to talk about, to teach on specific historical events? Can you imagine a government trying to limit teaching on history? Can you imagine a country making it, for, making it forbidden to tell the truth about the news. There is nothing new under the sun. Uh, the people of God experienced the same thing in the book of Nehemiah. The people of God were oppressed. They were held captive in a foreign land in Babylon. And while they were held captive in a foreign land, they did not have ready access to scripture. They did not hear a lot of people speaking their language. And we see that in the book of Nehemiah because they were held in captivity. But by the time we get to Nehemiah, they are just free. Uh, they are going back to their homeland and they are in their homeland with a man by the name of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah started off as a cupbearer for the king of Persia. Then he became governor for the people of Israel. 
Nehemiah is known mostly uh, for rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem to help protect the people. But another little known fact about Nehemiah is that he was high on social justice. He wanted to make sure everybody was treated fairly. And when you read the whole book of Nehemiah, he talks a lot about that. He talks a lot about social justice and he talks a lot about not abusing the temple. Uh, in chapter 5, you see that Nehemiah is strong on social justice, but it's like that all over the Bible. All over the Bible is talking about treating people fairly and taking care of the least, the last, and the lost, and also making sure that governments don't oppress their people. If you read your Bible... That's why I have a hard time believing pastors, so-called pastors, and so-called Christians who have a problem talking about social justice in church. Social justice is all over the Bible. Rebuke the oppressor. Learn to do good. Seek justice. It's all over the Bible. Take care of the widows and the orphans. It's all over the Bible. Woe to those who prescribe unjust laws over the people. It is all over the Bible. But we have these people who have been in this oppressed situation and now they're back home and they're back home and Nehemiah and all the people gather around a huge platform and Nehemiah and these people read the word of God to them. Why? Because these people are getting a chance to hear the uncensored word of God. Some of them are getting a chance to hear the uncensored word of God for the first time. And others may have heard it before, but now they get to hear it when they are at home. The citizens of Judah had lived in exile in Babylon for over 70 years, cut off from their homeland and their temple in Jerusalem, and they had little access to the news of Judah because they were living as strangers in a foreign land. And finally, finally, they were allowed to return home, and Nehemiah led them in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, and the priest Ezra read from the scripture outside the water gate. And the people listened. For them, the truth did not come through a backdoor portal into a server on a video game like Minecraft, but it came at the water gate in the walls of Jerusalem. The water gate was where everybody had to gather in Jerusalem. Rich, poor, man, woman, it did not matter. They all got together and Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, all who could hear with understanding. They had access to the law, the scriptures, the book of the law of Moses. That was their uncensored library. Verse four, I did not read it because that was not on the lectionary calendar, but verse four, if you read that on your own, it says that the people of God gathered under a, a, a large wooden platform. They gathered around a large wooden platform, a stand, if you will. They were under the stand. And they got an understanding. They read scripture and had scripture interpreted for six hours. Six hours of scripture and interpretation and they loved it. Uh, and the response was for them to say amen, to respond to the word. The response to the word was to go and worship. That is what we should do when we hear the word, respond and worship. And then Nehemiah told them to go out and celebrate. You know, sometimes people hear scripture and they feel down 
But there is joy in the law. There is freedom in the law. There is salvation in the law. And so he told them to go out and celebrate and eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks while taking care to provide for those who might not have anything to eat. You still can't get away from the social justice. You still can't get away from taking care of those who are the least, the last, and the lost, even in the midst of this celebration. And the day became unique and holy, and Nehemiah commanded them to not be grieved because the joy of the Lord is their strength. This became a celebration of Sukkot or the Feast of Booths where they would remind themselves of the time where they didn't have homes to celebrate in. And so they would celebrate by by spending time in tents just outside their houses. But he told them to celebrate, not be grieved at the word of God. And that same message applies to us today. When we allow the truth of God to shape our lives, there is nothing fake about the power of the word of God to refresh our souls and guide our steps. It is no lie that we can understand scripture best when we stand under God's word and allow it to mold our hearts, our souls, and our minds. When the word of God is read and interpreted, We share the experience with the people of Judah who wept and rejoiced because those were the words that they understood that were declared from to them. Uh, In every time and place, the uncensored word of God is our truth and the joy of the Lord is our strength. I can imagine them reading some word of God and some uncensored truth so that they would be able to hear these things and know that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you from them. To hear some uncensored versions of no weapon formed against me shall prosper. To hear the uncensored version of of, of the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. To hear the uncensored version of Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me to hear an uncensored version of the joy of the Lord being their strength. An uncensored version of my son forgetting not my laws, but let my heart keep thy commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Do not be wise in your own eyes to, to, to see these things in them. The joy of the Lord is your strength. To hear the uncensored word of God is your strength. Do not allow anybody to take that from you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church are open, and we invite you to come. Pray with me, please. God, we thank you for this opportunity again to listen in your word to listen in your uncensored word. Help us to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understandings, Lord God. In all our ways, acknowledge you and you direct our paths, Lord God. Let this word reach those who need it, that have a desire to grow and know about this community of us called Christians. Let your Holy Spirit do what only your Holy Spirit can. And that there are those that may ask, what must I do to become saved? It is in Christ's precious, perfect, powerful name we submit this prayer. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to connect with me on social media, Pastor Johnny Simpson Jr. on Facebook, at Pastor J. Simp Jr. on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks again for watching and God bless.